Welcome to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Good morning and thanks for tuning in. I'm Marina Jurica and we're here in the viewing gallery of the Spacecraft Assembly Facility. And right below me here is one of our next Earth Observing Satellites, SWAT, which stands for Surface Water Ocean Topography. Launching in November 2022, SWAT will give NASA its first global survey of Earth's surface water providing data about clean air and water, extreme events, and long-term environmental changes. You can join in on the conversation here live by putting your questions in the comment box, and we'll get it as we head throughout the program. And joining me now is Karen St. Germain, who is the Earth Division Science Director at NASA headquarters. And she's gonna give us a glimpse into the future of Earth missions for NASA. And then a little later in the program, we'll be talking to Parag Vaze, who's the program manager for SWAT, and he's going to let us know what really sets SWAT apart and makes it unique. So welcome, Karen. Thank you so much, Marina. It's great to be here with you, and it's great to be at JPL. Yes, and it's great to actually see SWAT down right here beside us. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is an exciting time, and NASA has many NASA Earth Science missions that are orbiting and studying the Earth from the carbon cycle to the atmosphere to sea level rise. And what is going to be in the future now as we head forward with NASA Earth Science missions that we can get excited about? Absolutely. So we have a great year coming up. We've got, uh, we've got five launches coming up in the, in the coming year or so, and including uh, SWAT and NISAR, who, which are both behind us here. Of course, Landsat uh, 9, which is, uh, which, uh, which is our partnership with USGS, as well as uh, Maya and EMIT, two other uh, aerosol and pollution uh, uh, observation systems. But after that, we are, we are already starting to build, starting to move out on the planning of what we're calling the Earth System Observatory. It'll be a collection of missions, instruments uh, that view the entire Earth system from the atmosphere to the surface to the subsurface to give us a full 3D view of our planet. So it's going to be a really busy next couple of years for us, which is so exciting studying our planet Earth. Now, I've noticed with many of the Earth science missions, there's a lot of international collaboration. Why is that and why is that important? Oh, it's so important to us. The, the changes that we're seeing in our environment are, are global. And, uh, and, and that means we need the, the global community of spacefaring nations to join with us to make all of the observations we need to make to really understand what's happening on our planet. And so our, these partnerships really just multiply what we're able to do. And thanks so much for all of you guys tuning in. We're getting a lot of great social media questions, Karen. Jennifer on Twitter asks, will we be sharing this information with people in other parts of the globe? Absolutely. So NASA has long had a, a policy of, of full, free, and open data. But one of the things, one of our major initiatives right now is something we're calling open science. And the idea there is to get all of the data and all of the models and the applications that we derive from the data into one ecosystem to get data out to people who need it no matter where they are around the globe. And societal impacts are so important, especially to the people who are watching out there today. Karen, you've spent the bulk of your career studying Earth science missions and previously being with NOAA. How will these Earth science missions collectively help society and understand our Earth better? Yeah, so you know, we, get, we get excited about building the satellites and collecting the observations. And, but really, that's just the start. The next step, once we have the observing systems launched and we have the observations, the next step is really to extract the scientific understanding from those observations, the understanding what's actually happening, and then converting that into actionable information. Uh, people uh, at, at every level need information to make decisions. We're very familiar with NOAA's mission with, uh, with weather prediction and severe weather warning, and of course that helps people prepare in the near term. We're also wanting, we want to help people prepare for the long-term changes that are coming. And that's, that's important at the federal, state, local, tribal levels. It's also important for the private sector. They're, they have to be able to plan for risks as well. So the idea is get this information out there where people can make use of it to make better science-informed decisions. And that's what's great. And what's incredible about all this information, Karen, is it's, it's 
accessible to everybody. Absolutely. In fact, part of the Open Science Initiative not only is to get information out there, but it's also to get more, uh, more people working on our data and, and joining us in asking a, a broader variety of questions that we can answer with our data. So it's, uh, we're, we're trying to lower the, any barriers to access through this initiative as well. And it's so important to get the prognostics into the models, make them better, get the earlier warning signals out for places like NOAA and the National Weather Service. And each Earth satellite that we put up there is a part of that. Absolutely. We, uh, we assimilate the data from all of the, our observing systems and, as you said, capture it in models. And it's the models that give us the predictive capability. The observations tell us what's happening now. But it's the models that help us see into the future. And that's really where we get the, the maximum benefit from these observations. That's great. We've got another question on Facebook from Jamie asking, how did you personally get into earth science? Ah, well, so uh, going all the way back to, to my undergraduate days, I, I loved physics and engineering. And, uh, and I found my way into a terrific graduate program that really uh, that looked at earth science from end to end. And I always loved solving problems. Uh, you know, I did puzzles as a kid, and I was always romping around out in nature. So this seemed like a great marriage. And that graduate program uh, was, had a hardware element. We built instruments. We took them to the field. We did scientific work, and we presented the work. And so it really perfectly prepared me for a career to get to where I am today, right, where, where we, we look at that whole end-to-end -end scientific value chain. But I, I'm here because I love this Earth. I, and honestly, the other part about Earth science, you know, we, we talk about the Earth a lot, but it's really about the people. Because, you know, the, the, the Earth changes, it, it, in, in the Earth is resilient. The question for us is, how, are, how resilient are we going to be in the face of these changes? And so it's, that's a big motivator for me as well. Well, Karen, that's right. We all live on this earth together, and it's all our jobs to protect it. That's for Absolutely. sure. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much. It's great to be here and, uh, and see the hardware. Yes, wonderful. All Let's right. travels back home. Thank you. <laughs> Now Bye -bye. remember, if you'd like to ask the mission a question, just make sure you pop that question in the comment box and we'll try to get it answered for you as we head into the rest of the program. Now here at JPL, we have been completing some very critical testing on SWAT, which you can see right here in the clean room. And this testing is very important because it makes sure that the satellite can survive launch and be in space. Now SWAT is getting ready to be shipped to France soon as our partners Kness, the French space agency, finished preparing the satellite for launch. So joining me right now is project manager Parag Vaze. Good morning, Parag. Good morning, Marina. Happy to be here. Oh, I'm it's excited. so excited. I'm <laughs> really excited with uh, what you just saw. So we're, uh, we're very happy uh, and, and getting prepared for our next step. That's so great, and it's so amazing to see it here in all its glory. And SWAT is right below us here. Can you tell us a little bit about how it works and what your team's going to be doing to prepare to ship it over to France in the next couple weeks? Right. So first of all, what you're seeing is the product of about 10 years of work with hundreds of people, engineers, scientists. And one of the major features of, uh, of what you're seeing here is really all of the instrumentation for the satellite, what we call the payload module. Within that, we house six instru science instruments along with all of the supporting hardware. And then one of the main features that we have for SWAT that really sets it apart is a new radar system uh, that's called the KA band radar interferometer. It's, it does a very high precision wide swath measurement. So uh, we really want to be able to sense uh, the water, the water height, the water slope all across the world. And this uh, radar system will basically bounce signals to the surface, receive them to the two antennas, and help us understand the height and the, and the slope of the, of, of the water that we're seeing. And can you point Karen out to us? Yeah, so Karen, first of all, is uh, the, the things that you see um, are, are actually not as visible, but the, all of the white structure that you see, uh, sort of the bottom two thirds of the payload module houses all of the electronics, but the base, biggest visible feature 
are the antennas that are stowed right now. Mm -hmm. They're large antennas that will basically deploy out and then extend out. And that will be about 15 feet on each side along with about 10 feet of antennas on each side. So that is the main visible feature and all the electronics are inside the payload module. Now we've talked about all the critical testing mm -hmm. we've been doing here at JPL. Why is that important? I know they're doing metrology testing today. Right, so um, first of all, uh, what we do as we're developing the, the whole system is we build each system, we test each system, we then assemble it to the next higher level of integration and, and test it again. And this is right now, uh, has finished all of the uh, functional performance and environmental testing. So the environmental testing is that last piece to check that it's ready for space. It's not only ready for space, but it's ready for the ride to space. And it's very important to make sure so that when we get to that next step, we don't discover some, some sort of new features that we have to go back and, and fix. But we're in very good shape. We've completed all of that testing and ready to uh, mate with our hardware, which is our, our spacecraft bus provided by the French Space Agency in France. So shipping off to the shipping French off space to, in just to, a couple weeks. Yeah, and uh, at the end of June, we're planning on shipping this whole structure uh, out to uh, France and mating it with the spacecraft platform, which will be about, uh, about two-thirds of what you see here, and, and mating that whole structure together, uh, and then starting its uh, final journey towards testing and then, uh, and then launch. Later next year. And we talked about your journey many times, Farag. Your entire <laughs> career has yeah. been on Earth Science Mission now for decades. And we're getting a lot of great social media questions. And this one's awesome from Edgar on Facebook asking, what were and are your inspirations for this concept in forming the SWAT satellite? And like you said, your journey has been on all Earth Science missions. So what has made this one yeah. stand so, out? So first of all, I, uh, I got into um, really being fascinated with satellites in space, even as a child. But really, I was fortunate to work in Earth science because it's something very tangible. To me, we see results of that very quickly from the projects that we've worked on. And almost every project we, we've set out, we've achieved that goal. But what's really exciting is all the things we learn that we didn't expect. And that every time we do one of these satellite campaigns, it's very exciting to not only see what we, we, of course, expected, but all of the tremendous possibilities that it opens up. And that's going to be uh, really the future for SWAT, because we're expecting a brand new measurement over the inland waters and exploring that whole area that's, that's not really been seen before as a, as a full world. And keying that information in for folks at mm -hmm. home here is that SWAT will see the inland water, which we that's haven't right. been able to see before. So tell us why that's impactful. Yeah, so SWAT, the name, doesn't say oceans. It says surface water, right? So all of the water that we are able to sense from space, so oceans, rivers, any larger body of water that we are able to observe, we're going to see that. Uh, it, it, it's going to be one of those features that we really haven't seen before for fresh water uh, on hydrology, as we call it. And that's something that is really tremendous, again, in everyday life. I don't need to explain to people how important it is to have fresh water coming that they're using daily, right? Mm -hmm. So that connection of understanding is, is just tremendous. And along those lines, how will SWAT help those people who are impacted by those bodies of water, who live near those bodies of water? Right, right. So Karen just talked a little bit earlier about how we use the data and provide the data. So our, our plan is to provide that data very quickly, maybe within a few days of exactly what we're, we're observing. There's lots of direct applications that are happening. And then, of course, providing that data for understanding uh, other patterns as we go out you know, further. But things where we have floods, we want to understand and provide that data as quickly as we can for, for the people, the decision makers. And SWAT, within uh, uh, just a overflight, within a few days, will be able to provide very clear maps of exactly what's happening. Our next question <clears throat> comes from Bradley on Facebook, asking, will SWAT be utilizing SAR? Data harmonization with SMAP and NISAR measurements would be a fantastic application for modeling future ecosystem scenarios. Right. So yes, it's, it's using 
uh, interferometric SAR, synthetic aperture radar. That is the key to the new Karen instrument. And yes, it's our goal that the measurements that SWAT is providing stand alone are very power powerful, but really combined with NISAR and other data sets and observations is really going to be uh, a, a tremendous amount of additional information to answer those tough questions. And Emerson on Facebook asks, <laughs> what is the type of technology you use to make the measurements? Which is a little long what you were just talking about. Right, so um, you know the, the genesis of this idea is actually from a prior shuttle mission called the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. So the basic concept of interferometry has been demonstrated and used before. That was actually used to sense the solid Earth and map the solid Earth. And we thought, hey, why can't we do this for the ocean? Um, and, and we can. It turns out we can do it. It is a tough problem to do because those measurements really have to be done. Very high power radar, lots of data, and lots of stability. You name it, everything is about stability. But we're able to have that technology to design in that stability and those capabilities and data processing even on board to enable this now. Well, thanks so much for joining us here, Prague, and good luck to you and your team as you prepare to ship off to France. Thank you. We're really excited, and we're excited to see everybody following us in our journey. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Frog. Okay. Now, as we mentioned before, SWAT is going to be launching from Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is in Central California, in November of 2022, so late next year. And taking a final look at SWAT here in the clean room, you can get the very latest from this mission. Just follow at NASA JPL and at NASA Earth on Twitter and Facebook. And for more in-depth information, visit SWAT.JPL.NASA.gov. At NASA Earth Science, your home is our mission. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more great Earth Science missions.